and I think it's really helped me grow a lot. So I'm opening up the evening for us and um, I was hoping we could um, take a few breaths together and then I'm going to share a scripture that um, I thought would be nice for everybody tonight. So if people can just find themselves in a nice spot, wherever you are, sitting, laying down, standing, wherever you are, make sure your shoulders are relaxed. You can close your eyes if you'd like. Spine straight. And we're going to just take a few breaths together just to ground us into the space. So you can take your first breath with me in three, two, one, and through the nose, out through the mouth, letting the day go. And another one in three, two, one in through the nose, full deep breath, and out through the mouth, letting it go. And just one more breath, and this time we're gonna hold it at the top for a few seconds. In three, two, one. And hold it. Feeling the air move through your body and letting it go. Help them. Okay, so the scripture I have for tonight is from 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. And it says, Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And I chose this uh, verse because um, I've been doing the, the Bible app verse of the day for a while now. And um, they play this in a song for a few of the days. And I think it really helps like for me to remind me to be more gentle with myself and like show love for myself. Um, like yes, show love to others. But I think sometimes we can be our worst critics including like myself to myself. So I feel like it just really helps me to put it into context. Like I should love myself just as I love others. Um, and that's kind of what it means to me. And I think it can be a good reminder for us all where it's like, I think we can be so hard on ourselves and just, we can think we're not good enough or like we're doing things wrong and not living up to our fullest potential, but you can't like shame yourself into being better. You can only love yourself into being better. Mm -hmm. So. I thought that that um, just can be really powerful for us as we're going about our days and just living our lives with all the expectations that are placed on us. Yeah, so that is my verse. Um, and uh, next I'm going to ask Pastor Dorothy to come out. And just wondering how you are, Pastor Dorothy, and how was your day? Oh, I'm doing great. I had a, a good day. I was out taking a walk earlier today. It was a nice day. Rain in here. We needed some rain. We needed some moisture. It has been hot. Of course, it wasn't 114 like it was near where the prophet is, but I had a good day. Thank you for asking. How was yours? It was good. It was good. I um. I'm in Florida. I live in Florida right now and I drove back from Orlando. So I did a lot of driving and had a lot of stuff to do today, but now I get to just relax. So I'm happy with it. Okay. okay. I was just thinking, uh, Amanda, you don't like to be called Mandy or, or you don't like to be called Mandy by people that you don't really know. Is that uh, true? I mean, 
I feel like it's not like the biggest like thing that I don't like, but I mean, I think I like one. my name, Panda. Yeah, you do. I was getting that when I heard your name, that you uh, like that name. And I am uh, grateful that you're out because God is calling you out. I'm glad you're in the picture because God is calling you out because as you've always stood out, but it isn't something that you like, but I'm hoping that you will embrace it because you have so much knowledge and so much to share. There's so much in you uh, to share that God's pulling on you right now. And uh, just not God, but the powers that be are pulling on you. You know that there are so, there are many more. There's none greater than God, but there are many more pulling on you and that's okay. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you. And um, I am uh, Pastor Dorothy and I just wanted to say a few words. So I have this little thing, a question to ask you is that, it just came up in me when I was sitting here. It's like, have you spit today? You're like, okay, what does that mean? It means have you prayed? Those are the types of prayers. That's the way to remember the types of prayers. Supplication, petition, intercession, thanksgiving, spit. He's near you, in your mouth. So if you haven't thought about that little ditty, that's just something I wanted to, to share with you to remind you um, to pray. So those are the types of prayers you can play. And Timothy always said in the scripture, like they always uh, there's uh, offer supplication and intercession and thanksgiving for your brothers. And we're always should enter into God's gates with uh, thanksgiving. And because of the victories that he's given us and the reminder to hold on to those good things and to let go of the bad. So I'm here today to tell you to let go because there are some victories for you and you can't receive them if you're holding on to all of that old junk. So I'm here today to tell you to take out the trash because God wants to come in and he wants to fill you with something new and, and do something new um, in your life. And I was reading uh, Psalms 21 and it was talking about uh, the victories that David had. He had prayed and as for victories, like in the Psalms before, I read the Psalms all the time. And he was uh, asking for victory in Psalms 20 and God gave it to him and he was giving him thanksgiving. So have you really given God, have uh, told God, thank you for the things that he's done previously? And it's probably something that you asked for, even though he didn't do it quite the way you wanted him to do it. And now you kind of like taking back by that and you haven't really said thank you and you're saying well it didn't quite go that way so was it really God or was it really was it the enemy now do you think that if you ask God he's just gonna let the devil take over no if it if he took over it's you it's it's the flesh you we're kind of, we're sleeping with the enemy all the time and you don't have to go look at your neighbor and you don't have to look next door and you don't have to look at the pillar next to you. It's within us. We That flesh keeps us from going places we should go and giving credit uh, to the devil when we should give it to God and not looking at ourselves. So today I'm just here to uh, admonish you to let go and to let God in your life because it's like, the things that he's going to do now, he's going to do uh, with the quickly. It's like you're not going to be waiting for years now for your prayers to be answered. If you ask him, he's going to do it. You just have to know that he is going to do it. And that the, uh, the devil, as we always are giving him, the, uh, like I said, the, the victory, and we give him more kudos than we give God. I tell people that, he is probably going to be the only one that God says, well done, my good and faithful servant, because he's always on the job. We we will get off of the post anytime. He's doing what it is that he is permitted to do. But we're so focused that we don't do what it is that we are, permit, are supposed to be doing. And so today I'm just here this, this evening to say let go and let God. Man, I am thankful for this uh, platform. Because on this platform, there is like no condemnation. You know, you might feel convicted, but you're not going to feel condemned. 
you're always going to be urged to um, go forward. And then that urge that we get to be, as I was hearing the prophet say last night, to get saved again every day, you it's a done deal. If you ask God to do it, he did it. He is, he is not, look, he is not trying to trick you. If he say you have not because you ask not, it's because you didn't ask. And if you did ask, it's you not believing that he's going to do it. Because like, I've been so bad. I did this. I did this yesterday. I did that. Yes, uh, the other day I did that last year. And so he's saying, forget those things that are behind. Today, you got a clean slate. Even if you did it five minutes ago, you got a clean slate. So focus on where it is he wants to take you tonight. He has you tonight, he's here tonight, and he has us on this platform uh, with the prophet and with each other. We're in a good community. We're in a good place. And so it is not by accident that you're here. I know we say that all the time, but it surely is not. And I know that it's not by accident that I've been here with this company of prophets and with the prophet guru and with all of you rising mystics for four years. I do, I'm old. I do not have four years to waste. I don't even have another four months to waste. So I don't spend, I'm not just spinning my wheels. I know I have a purpose and I have a reason for being here. And I'm looking forward to the 72 names of God. Man, am I excited about that tomorrow. And it, I, I was telling the prophet, I said, man, when you finish this 72 names of God, when we go through this, I want to get on this platform next in September. Y'all are going to hear from me on one of these Sundays out of the month. And I was telling the prophet that we're just going to sit down and we're just going to have, I, I want to call it the power hour. And we're just going to get together and break through. And I'm hoping that you'll think about joining me. I'm working on the details. The prophet's going to help me work on the details. And it's like, tune in for the 72 names of God. You're going to be blessed as, as never before. I know that I will. And it's like, I have to be here because I'm not as good with numbers as the prophet. I can count money. But it's <laughs> like, when it comes to counting stars, I only know the stars in Texas are big and bright because I heard it in a song. And so I need this connection is for me. I'm not good at pulling out the numbers and saying what all of that mean and all of that. But I know that one thing that I do know that I love God and I know that he loves me and he hasn't ever punished me for not knowing, you know, all of the information or having as much information or being able to dig as much information out of the scripture as, um, as the prophet. And so it's like, now I tell y'all I'm, oh, the amount, the amount of study that I do now isn't the amount of study that I did in 30 years, but 30 years ago, but you know what? I'm grateful that I did it then. And I know that I have it and that God is building on it now. So it's like, you know what? I might get up in the morning and uh, and not even uh, read a scripture yet. It's like, okay, I'm playing a game. Y'all, I might be playing some spades somewhere. Don't tell nobody, okay? But, oh, I feel God in this place. Somebody getting free. My God, Jesus. But... It's not because I haven't been there. That's not where I started. That's a place that I'm in now sometimes. But believe me, that was not where I started. I had a hunger for God. It's my time up, prophet. I, <laughs> I had a hunger for God. I read everything. I went to all of the Bible meetings. I went to all of the conferences. I did all of that. I said, Lord, as much money as I spent at the conferences, I probably could have built a mansion by now. Uh, or, or be driving like five cars, as many donations as I gave at those conferences. Those were That was a time in my life. And I tell you, and, and I'm not knocking anybody, but there's a 30, a 60, and a 100 fold. You have to grow. 
that mm -hmm. is my 34 mm -hmm. right now is probably somebody 60, but that's okay because I'm not judging. But for me in the place that I was in, like using all of my energy to chase people when I should have been chasing God mm -hmm. was not where I supposed was I where I was supposed to be. But am I supposed to be now in this place with the prophet? Yes, right now I'm in this place with the prophet because I'm chasing the stars, okay? So I need to, he has that. I'm not going to dig it out as much as he is, but once he gives it to me, believe me, I'm going to write it down and I'm going to run with it. Even if I didn't look it up, he looked it up. So I want to say it's great being a part of this family. It's great having... Um, the prophet uh, in my life. I have learned so much. I have, man, I have grown so much. And sometimes it's like, I can only go and listen to part of what he's saying or a few words of, of what he says. And I know you guys are just got, are, are just gobbling it up. It's like, man, it's like, will make my head explode. But I thank God for being here. I thank God for the platform. I thank God for the people that the old, older one people that have been here. I want to say the older people, the people that have been here for a while and for uh, the new people that are here. And right now in my camera, I'm looking at Billy. Billy, how's your retention? Is it better? Give me a thumbs up if it's better. All right. See, God, whatever God reveals, he heals. So when we're here and we're speaking to people and the prophet is speaking to people, you might not see it right then, but believe me, it's coming. coming. So if you get a word of knowledge, it's probably something you have been wanting God to answer. If you get a word of wisdom, he's probably going to give you some, spe uh, some specifics on how to solve the go about solving that, uh, uh, getting answers to what it is you asking for, like he did the widow with the containers. When the prophet came and she said, oh man, they're about to take all of my sons and, and uh, make slaves out of them because my husband died and he left us in debt. And, and, and now they're getting ready to and make my sons work for them. And I'm not gonna have anybody, I'm just paraphrasing. But he and the prophet came and told her, well, what do you have in your house? And she told him what he has, she had in her house. So I'm asking you, what do you have in your house? Mm -hmm. And so she told him the oil. And he said, well, here's what you do. You go and you borrow as many containers as you can. You know, some of us would have gone next door, knocked on the door, knowing your neighbors don't like you and say, oh, they didn't answer. I didn't get any containers, so I guess that wasn't God. But he said, go get as many containers as you can and then bring them back. And she went and gathered it. Man, I would have had like the dog, mm -hmm. the cat, the, and, and everybody picking up containers. Anything <laughs> they could put it, pick, the dog can pick it up and bring it. If you can fetch, bring a container. So he brings, so she bring, he, she brings these containers, fills them all, and she had enough to live on and take care of her son and to get out of that. So what is it that you have in your house? Think about it and see what it is that God wants you to do with it. Blessings. Blessings, blessings. I'm going to open up everybody's mic here, and I want somebody, to, everybody that can to shout out. Come on, let's let's give a shout out. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 What's in your house? Hallelujah. 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 Praise. You on mute, Pastor Dorothy. Okay. Everybody's on mute now, I think. All right. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Dorothy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for just stirring us up there and getting us ready for where we're going to tonight. 
and uh, what's in your house? And she asked us, have you spit today? You know, that's Southern talking. Y'all have to live down in the South to understand that. Have you prayed today? Have you given thanks today? Have you spit today? I, I had to, I didn't know that one. So now I got a new one, like to ask people. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The hour of power is coming up probably around September with Pastor Dorothy. She's getting all prepared for it. It's going to be wonderful. You don't want to miss it. And thank you, Amanda. Didn't Amanda do really well tonight, didn't she? Wasn't that fun? Amen. Just reminded us back to get back to that meditation and breathing stuff. We're going to be doing that uh, starting tomorrow, matter of fact, when we get into the summer seminar. And for those of you that are yet haven't uh, uh, registered yet and want to be a part of the 72 names of God, 72 angels of God, uh, summer seminar, uh, Shemhesh Morfer, Morferesh, <laughs> uh, a seminar, the 72 names, you can, I'm going to post something here and you can look at that video in case you're new here we want to just welcome you also if you're here for the first time and you can find out how to become a part of it that is about four to six uh it's going to be four to five week course okay we say four to five because you know i got so many downloads i don't know exactly how we're going and where we're going with it but we're just going to flow with the spirit it may be four weeks it could be five weeks uh that we'll take to really just dig really into that and uh just unlock some kabbalistic truths and stuff and it's going to be a blessing to all of you so just want to welcome you guys here tonight and it's good to see all of you out there some of you i don't know have not met before but at the end here we will give you a chance to raise your hand uh to say something if you'd like to and uh we just appreciate that i see abel's in the house he made it i see uh, uh josiah's in the house uh, uh tonight but he's he's not wearing his low-cut v-neck italian shirt tonight so <laughs> How many remember that last week? <laughs> Kayla is why he's got his hand, got her hand raised. <laughs> that was a nice shirt. That was a nice shirt. And uh, see, Billy's in the house and uh, his retention is getting better. And the word of the Lord is coming to pass for the things that he's spoken to us. And we just appreciate all of you. And I'm going to get into this message here uh, tonight. And uh, this was really fun already. It's already fun. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was trying to just figure out where we're going all day like I do <laughs> a lot of times. Had an idea. And uh, so I want to really just kind of get into some uh, f to follow up with astrology and to follow up with some of the current affairs of things that's going on, because our ministry, I, I believe that God called us to be very relevant and to speak into things that are happening uh, in the world today and to. Uh, really just speak uh, the prophetic word to them. And again, if I didn't call your name tonight, uh, welcome you all. I was just like hearing someone. Uh, so uh, welcome to everyone here. Okay. Some of you I can't see. All right. So, uh, but anyway, uh, God wants us to be relevant to what is happening. And I believe it was uh, Pastor Dorothy that said that everything's happening so fast and these suddenlies are taking place. And that is true. That is, we're not just saying that. I mean, it is astronomically true. It is uh, astronomically astrologically true it is uh it is a scripture that says i'm gonna do a quick thing so we're you you're in that time of a quick thing where things are happening very fast and we're gonna just be uh matter of fact one translation says that things will happen so uh fast it's gonna make your head swim you know <laughs> i remember my grandmother used to say that a long time ago and i was you know when i was like, growing up as a kid i'm going wow that's in the bible <laughs> And so, uh, but uh, but it's, it's great, and uh, we're just in an awesome time. Uh, Saturday morning, I had planned on talking about uh, this uh, full moon in Capricorn that was taking place. And uh, but I told you guys at, at the morning session that I, I said nothing that I wanted to talk about. I had my little notes here and everything, and I didn't uh, get a chance to talk about the full moon in Capricorn to tell you some of the events that was going to be happening. So later on uh, that day, Saturday, I believe it was uh, uh, Prophet Sharon uh, called me or text me or something. I can't remember now. And so uh, she was saying that someone was saying that uh, Biden uh, had already kind of like step down or something. And I'm going, I told her, well, no, I says, you'll see it on CNN or Fox or somewhere when it happens and that it can't happen. So the moon is full. 
And so, uh, you know, and uh, because I, I, I knew I was able to see that. So I posted it in Telegram. And uh, how many of you guys read that where I post in Telegram about wave your hand at me? Have you read that about uh, that? that, you know, I, I don't remember exactly how I worded it, but saying about Biden stepping down, that it had to take place while the moon was full, you know? And I told others that, that you know, it was gonna, it was happening that night and later on, and I'm gonna show you how I saw that. Uh, and later on, they, they did say that the letter was drafted that night and then it was released yesterday. I'm going, whoa, that's just, you know, the heavens, the heavens declare, as I oftentimes say, and I repeat it again, because we have new people come in here all the time. And uh, we do deal with divine, what I call divine astrology. I believe that astrology is divine. I believe that it is something that God created. It is a prophetic tool that uh, he has given us and that uh, spiritual people are becoming more and more aware of it. And I'll even say, uh, quote unquote, Christian people are becoming more and more aware of it because it's just relevant and it's just a time that we got to go back to the old landmark if you will as for the old path wherein is the good way and walk therein so i want to just uh, share some thoughts here about the uh capricorn full moon and i'm going to screen share with you a little bit i'm going to back up a little bit because a whole lot has happened in the last two weeks hasn't it i mean world shaking events that are taking place these are not small things and but uh the the good thing about it is that the spirit of god God had us aware of many of these, well, all of these major events that was happening. Uh, it was announced from this platform as well as another platform we were speaking on uh, with Bishop Andrea Williams uh, at the Prophetic Advan uh, Advantage. And then again, last night, I'm going to share some of the things I shared last night and go in a little bit more depth. But just so that you can understand and see here uh, what we're talking about, I'm going to just pull up a chart that goes into uh let me see here okay let me pull up this one here i believe it is a chart that i cast um some time ago and uh i used it i think two weeks ago yeah uh for the 15th and uh was showing you i, I think everybody can see that can you see that okay that was on the 15th we're going to go through this a little bit i'm not going through all of this but i just want to point out a few things that's yet relevant here okay this was a couple of days after uh the assassination attempt on trump and which we had announced already uh i think two weeks before it happened we announced that you know uh between the 12th and the 17th that there was going to probably be an attack on him uh and an attempt on his life and that he would be in the news a whole lot because some major things was going to be happening now the way I knew this is because right here, this conjunct was coming. It was coming closer and closer together and it conjunct at 26 degrees. You have Mars and you have Uranus here conjunct at 26 degrees in Taurus here. And another fixed star, which you can't see called Al Gol, which is uh, the, the, the blinking eye of Medusa is, uh, is a, they, the science says it's a, it's a binary star, but it's actually three stars. And uh, matter of fact, there's actually other st smaller stars behind it but there's actually three stars and these three stars are in this uh, uh, orbit and every time one goes around the other one it causes the eye to blink and so I saw that eye blinking and <laughs> and it does it like every three days I saw it blinking so I knew that something had to happen here right and so we have Mars that was showing aggression we were showing like you know blood violence and things like that and then you have Uranus here showing that something was going to suddenly happen and and all that and then from there uh, on two weeks prior to the event I was able to tell what was going to happen right and so uh, uh, looking at this conjunct here and as it was moving closer to here 24 degrees about two days earlier and also noticing that it was going to be at at his mid heaven on a transit sh chart which meant crazy things and that something was going to happen, you know, that could have happened extremely bad to him. So now, uh, but that energy is still here. What I'm trying to say, that's what I'm getting to. And so even though I can't show you the uh, star uh, Al Ghul, uh, which means the head of the demon, it is yet conjunct with Uranus. And so this is why we're having, we're going to be seeing a lot of sudden things change. And I told you that whenever Al Ghul is conjunct with whatever, Al Ghul 
bull is beheaded, right? She, she lost her head. That's Medusa. And so I told you that heads would roll, okay? Or, and it represents like even heads of states, heads of corporations, and things like that would fall. Amen? Okay. And so, I mean, the, the heavens don't lie. And so with this conjunct in showing us what was going to happen and where it was at, we were able to see and to discern what was going to happen. Now I'm going to get off of this and I'm going to move to another chart here and uh, just show you the uh, the full moon that we just experienced yesterday and that energy is still here and so I'm going to show you that and uh, then I'm going to like talk to you a little bit about that and show you some things that is that that are taking place if I can pull it up here let me see if I can get it it takes a couple of minutes to just maneuver with uh, the things here on uh, the desktop to get things in place so that they can be uh, shown here. All right, I think I got it here. I got the right one. All right, so uh, then again, let me see here. My God, why did that happen? Okay, we're having a little bit glitch here. We're going to get rid of that. Okay, let me just go back here. Uh, and for those of you that are wondering why are we talking about things like this, the full moon, the new moon and stuff, uh, there's a scripture, Psalms 81, I believe, verse 3. And it, it says to us, uh, this is something that God gave his people. He said, blow the shofar, blow the trumpet in the new moon and blow it in the full moon and on the solemn feast days to blow the shofar, blow the trumpet. And the reason for that uh, was for many things. Anybody want to know why God told them to do that? Okay, wave your hand at me, wave at me or somebody. Okay, thank you, thank you. I see a hand there, a hand there. Okay, great. Okay, one of the reasons is because, uh, you know, the, the Bible is based on the lunar cycle. It is a lunar solar calendar. We are on a solar lunar calendar because of the sun worshipers. And so they changed things around and they made, uh, you know, uh, Sunday, the day of worship and all of that. And so, uh, but uh, the Bible is, 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 is a lunar solar calendar. And um, in order to know when the new moon came, they had moon watchers. And so, because sometimes it's overcast and they will go up into the mountains and they would identify the first sliver of a new moon and they would blow the shofar. And to let everybody know, it's a new month, it's a new moon, it was a big thing, it was a festival, because it was representing that you get to start over again. A new start is happening like for you, and many other things. And they did the same thing with the full moon, showing that, you know, now you've come to the end of a phase, or a cycle, or a stage, or something, and so, you know, now you can manifest, you can manifest, okay, whatever it is. And so many, so those were, those those were some of the basic reasons why that they uh, blew the, the shofar in the new moon as well as the full moon. Now the shofar or the trumpet is a prophetic instrument. And so it was a prophetic message. So the hidden message behind that or the deeper message was that God Almighty, the Most High, was speaking during certain times, certain things. And for those like the sons of Issachar, the children of Issachar that understood the seasons and the times and stuff, they were able to interpret for the nation, for the people, what the Most High was saying. And guess what? We are the sons of Issachar today, the sons and daughters of Issachar today, and we are interpreting what the heavens are saying. Okay, now here is a, a chart of the full moon that just took place yesterday, and I'm just showing you this. I wanted to do this Saturday morning, but uh, we didn't get a chance to uh, because Spirit wanted to do something else, and I'm going to show you some things that I saw. Now, we are looking at this. You see, you see the moon was like at 29 degrees here in, in Capricorn. This is the second full moon in Capricorn in a row. Why is that important? Okay, last month around June 21st, maybe 22nd, 21st, 22nd, there was a full moon and it was in Capricorn. It was at one degrees of Capricorn. And so yesterday the moon became full again at 29 degrees. All of these numbers 
represent something, as Pastor Dorothy was saying. So I'm going to tell you what they represent. And so 29 is the end of the cycle. It is the fullness. It is at the end of it. Matter of fact, it is called, as you hear me say, anorectic. It's like we're critical. Something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. Now, and me understanding and knowing that this conjunct over here with Uranus uh, in Taurus and where um, uh, Mars was, which Mars is now now moved into Gemini, that it had to be something sudden happen. So I, I, I posted on Facebook and I told other people uh, uh, all Saturday, I says, Biden is going to step down. He's not going to go for the presidency, but he has to do it during the full moon. So that means the night before the full moon or the next four days, because that is the energy of the full moon. OK, and so he did it just as uh, I, I said it because I was able to read it in the heavens. They drew up the letter on the night before and then they presented it yesterday. Now, if you wanted to go into the timing, I'm not going to go into all of that. Even the timing that it was released and all of that, you can cast a chart for that and you'll find out a whole lot of information. I'm not going into all of that. Right. OK, so now we understand what was going on and that he had to. He had to do it. Why did he have to do it at that time? Number one, the sun is in cancer, okay? Sun is yet in cancer, right? And so this nation here was born under the sign of cancer, 1776, July 4th. So every nation has a zodiac sign, just like every person born. Every contract you sign, everything that you do, that you put your name to do, that you put your name to, it becomes stamped because you're bringing it out from the etheric realm into the physical realm. And so there is an energetic stamp, there is an astrological stamp to it that creates a whole just a troll of information of what is going to take place with that. Did you hear what I said? That's how in-depth this prophetic science is. Everything that happens, every time you sign a document or anything, whether it is uh, you release, you, you sign a check or whatever, there is an energetic stamp and influences from the heavens at that point that gives a cosmic fingerprint for that showing what is going to happen with it? Hallelujah. That's I get excited just thinking about that. The greatness of the most high God, the greatness of of God that does this. So so anyway, he had to do this. Why the sun was in cancer, although it may be benign to some of the people there. And it had to happen while the moon is full uh, in Capricorn. Why? Because Capricorn represents heads of state. It represents corporation, government, authority, leadership, all of that. And so I knew by revelation, by spirits, I'm just teaching you here how this works with me. Although I may uh, draw up a chart or cast a chart or something, I depend on the Holy Ghost to, uh, to interpret Okay, what is going to happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what is called stargazing in the Bible, right? Which uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and that big Negro, <laughs> they were stargazers. That means that they understood the science of the heavens, but what made them stand out in the realm of Babylon was when they looked at it, they had a vision or they had prophetic insight. They had intuition that made it predictive and where they knew exactly what was going to happen. That's how Daniel knew when Messiah was going to be born 500 years before it happened. I'm getting off from my subject. He knew that's why he was able to write Daniel chapter nine It's in there. And he tells you when Messiah is going to come. That's why the Magi's came, because they saw the star or the conjunct that Daniel had spoken about 500 years prior. It was already written because he was collaborating with the Magi's of that realm because he was the master astrologer. <laughs> he was a Zoroastrian priest. I know that a lot of Christians wouldn't like to hear that, but it was. <laughs> and the prophets and the seers, they collaborated just like what we do. We you saw that yesterday and uh, with uh, uh, 
Bishop Andrea's platform, how we get together company of prophets and we uh, collaborate and we go back and forth with things that we see. All right. So now all of that information is in the heavens there. So I knew that had to happen with uh, with Biden and it had to happen while the moon is full, whether it was on that day, the 21st or within the next two days or so while that energy was there, it had to happen. Now I'm going to go a little bit further. Uh, I'm going out on a limb. I call this prophecy on a limb and I don't mind going out on a limb. <laughs> <laughs> but now that was one stage of his releasing of the reign of power. And some of you all were a part of the uh, uh, teachings and sessions back in uh, 2019 and 2020 before he came into office. And I told you that uh, he would win, but he would not serve out the full term. OK, anybody remember that? Some of y'all was there. Remember that. OK, now. And so so now within the next few months, something has to happen. OK, for that word to come to pass, because it has to come to pass. And uh, so what's going to happen within the next, say, 29 days, 29 to 30 days, he will end up uh, releasing power completely over to the vice president. OK, if he doesn't within the next 29 days and i'm on record saying it and it's going to be out there <laughs> if he doesn't within the next 29 30 days there will be an event happen where he's in front of cameras and he's going to glitch majorly and they will basically have to take him off of the stage before the cameras and stuff and then the power will be handed over okay you heard it here all right so all right, so now let's go a little bit further with this. We're talking about this full moon. I see all of this information is there, this full moon here, but I'm gonna show you some other things here. Uh, another reason why this full moon was very important and stuff, you know, all of them are, but this one was because this month here, July, it doesn't matter where you are, if you live in this country or anywhere around the world, uh, it, it, you know, we are at the, it is, it is the, the middle point to, for the next part of the year. Of course, for those of you that are in the Southern Hemisphere, you know, it is your winter but you know nevertheless you know when you look at it astrologically or astronomically we're right there and the spirit began to say to me before uh, July came in that July was going to be very special and that it was going to just mark a whole lot of new beginnings and that everything would be accelerated so I began to prophesy into that and speak into that because of what spirit had said now um Another reason why uh, that it is very uh, important here is because with this full moon uh, there, uh, you find that uh, in Capricorn, there is there are changes taking place in governments, in leadership, not only in this country, but around the world. That's what this full moon is prophesying, that there will be sudden changes, just like you see this little line going over here. Uh, forming that trine here with Uranus, okay? Uranus represent things suddenly happen, shakeups, you know, just out of the blue, surprises, things happening suddenly, not really planned or things that you did not expect. That is the planet of the awakener. So there is an awakening that is taking place on the planet. And it's happening fast. It is people are becoming more woke. People are becoming more aware very fast. And some of them don't understand it. They're not really fully understanding what is going on. All they realize is that something is turning within their minds. Something is changing with them. And so you're going to see uh, high, uh, uh, celebrities and uh, big name people and uh, wealthy people uh, starting to really just focus more on the on the spiritual and the scientific things of uh, physics in particular uh, as never before this uh, full moon is setting that off because it is awakening the Christ consciousness within humanity on the planet hallelujah and that is very exciting it is awakening the Christ consciousness within you and uh, everyone uh, even the the animal kingdom everything is being awakened to a whole new space and uh, we're just excited about it. Okay, another thing. This uh, this full moon here, it was called the Buck Full Moon. The Buck Full Moon, and uh, that's because you know the uh, the First Nations people, when the full moon would come, 
they, you know, at this time and stuff, the, the deer had its antlers and everything, you know, and so which represents maturity. How many bucks out there? Come on, you bucks, uh, male or female, you bucks out there. You're growing, you're growing, you're growing. I believe it was Pastor Dorothy that was talking about growing and stuff. You know, you may have been 34, but now you got to move out of that into 60-fold consciousness and on into 100-fold consciousness. You're getting your antlers. You're getting your antlers. You're growing. But this, uh, this full moon was also called the thunder moon. And we know that the thunder represents the voice of God. The scripture speaks in the book of Revelations about the seven thunders uttering their voices and various things happening, right, on the planet, right? And so this is also called the thunder uh, uh, full moon. I believe that there are some sons and daughters of thunder out there. Uh, let me just look at some of y'all for a minute here, y'all, that's brave enough to have your, uh, uh, let's see, your, your, your things open here. I see even Jeremiah says he's a, he's a son of thunder, you know, and some of you are your you're sons and daughters of thunder. In other words, your voice is going to be heard. Uh, your voice is going to be heard. You're no longer going to be in the shadows. You're no longer going to be in the background like what you saw with uh, Abanda tonight. But your voice is going to be heard and you're going to uh, sound with, with the voice of God that's going to come forth out of your being. And it's not like you, as uh, Pastor Dorothy was saying, not like you're going to have to maybe be learn and maybe do all the research and study that I do, but it's just going to come natural. It's going to come just spiritually out of you, will manifest from you. So this, uh, this full moon is announcing that to us also. Now, the full moon is about bringing things to light. It's about bringing things to light. It's about things that's been in the dark being brought to light. Now, that happens with every full moon, but with this full moon, you're going to see a whole lot of stuff just uncovered. I mean, like a trove of mess and garbage and stuff where I'm telling you where you're going to see it because it's about to start to hit the news is already happening now but you're going to see it in major corporations you're going to see it in government you're going to see it in the banking system you're going to see it in in these major institutions you're going to see a big scandal that's going to come up and um uh, in the school system soon a very uh, something's going to come up with with the school system and this is not going to be just like in one area but it's going to be like you know like national is going to make attention uh national attention i'm hearing that the spirit is saying it's going to come up and so there's this uh it, there's this movement that's taking place because uranus is shaking everything up that can be shaken and the full moon is bringing everything to light that's been into dark okay and that's been in the dark all right another point here that i wrote down let's see here um hmm. okay let's see okay i got that all right now another thing when there is a full moon okay it is closer to the earth and the tides rise the tides rise okay you are over 70 percent liquid water right and so during this full moon which is yet happening it is yet happening everything within you is rising Everything within you is rising. So you don't want the negativity to rise up and manifest in your life at this time. So you want to move from that. If it happens, if it comes up, you want to move from it right away because you don't want it to be magnified and amplified within your life and a part of what you are moving into. But everything within you is coming to the surface. Everything is rising up just as the tides rise. OK, and you might want to be programming the water and the fluids within your body with positive things because water you know is like is intelligent and it is programmable you speak to it you, you talk to your water you know and uh and it obeys you it really the molecular excuse me the molecular structure of the water changes based on the frequency of your voice and the intent behind what you're saying do you understand what i'm saying now uh I, i've traveled overseas and uh, a lot in the past and stuff and i remember being in asia also being in in various parts of africa and i'd be on the big stage right and you would see like hundreds of jugs of waters up there that people brought because they believe without the science but they knew intuitively and instinctively that when the word of the lord was going forth the prophetic word or the message is going forth that something is happening to that water and they would have all of that water up there and i was going wow 
They know, they know, they know. Because see, I, had, I, I used to do this in my conferences uh, in Seattle, teach on like uh, cymatics and the power of sound and frequency on water and change the molecular structure. And so your molecules in your body, okay, uh, with this full moon that is there, everything is rising, speak to your body, listen to things that's going to uh, build up your, your immune system, build up your, your thinking that's gonna be very positive because you're changing the codes and the molecular structure of the water and the fluids within your body. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. So uh, just wanted to just throw that out there. Even the food that you eat, speak over it, pray over it, change it. Okay. By what you say. All right. So let's go on here. So now we find here that, um, let's see, I have, have another point here. Everything is on the rise. Okay. I think I've uh, talked enough about that. All right. And uh, it's about growth. Okay. This era is a, this time is about growth. It's about renewal. Okay. Um, uh, unexpected changes and challenges. Unexpected changes and challenges. Okay. Uh, it is also on the, I guess, if you want to call it the negative side, that it is showing us some of the chaos that's going to be coming. I'm just going to uh, just screen share this again because uh, this. Uh, full moon, although it happened yesterday, I'm looking at it and I, I'm reading it not just for yesterday, but I'm looking at it for over the next, say, six months or so, because I've been looking at uh, the movements of the heavens and what is going to be happening. Okay, so you're going to see a lot of changes. You're going to see chaos that's coming and a lot of other things. This is about emotional release, okay? It is about uh, energy cleansing, okay, from trauma. And I believe I heard Pastor Dorothy again saying, let go, let go. That's what this full moon is basically saying. Let go of trauma, let go of other things. And it's also about enhancing your intuition. I'm going to show you that in a minute is about manifesting your power, manifesting the power that God has given you. Now I'm gonna quickly show you this and I'm gonna remove this from here. So this is where it was just yesterday when it was complete, when it was uh, hit, uh, became full. And what time was that? It is right here. And this is based on West Coast time. I believe it was like around 317 or 3, uh, yeah, 3, 317 or 319, it's 316. Okay, like uh, AM. Okay, when that took place, but I want you to look at this and see uh, what was what was going on here. As you see uh, these lines here, these are aspects and what was going on. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to just touch on just a few just to show you uh, what is happening here. Now, number one, you see what is called this this trine here because it's 120 degrees here. That little. Um, triangle here represents a triangle is and so that's that's a really good thing here for us right and so now this is dealing with your motivation your action and things that you are wanting to implement and put into place so this energy that is out there it is there you are getting that energetic frequency that energetic um go ahead you know the influence of the heavens is saying that you have everything that you need within you the motivation and everything to, to start business to start whatever it is that you're doing your work or whatever it is that you have been uh, uh dreaming about your goals and stuff another trying here is with uh, as i said earlier is with uranus here so this is the awakening that is happening it is bringing about an awakening that is happening some of you are going to find your children your grandchildren or your uh, relatives that may not have been as uh, interested in spiritual spirituality will start to ask you questions, okay? They will start to uh, begin to ask questions or, or talk about things that's a little bit different, things that maybe they did not want to hear about or talk about before because there is an awakening that's taking place. There is an awakening and this uh, full moon uh, that we're in is, is pointing to that. Now, this full moon is also squaring Chiron. Chiron, okay. This is your key to the kingdom. Those of you that I've done readings for understand Chiron. Chiron is the wounded healer. This is the place where you have wounds, and most of the time, this is in your early life, okay, uh, when you're very young. And so you find that this um, full moon is is squaring that. So that means that that you're being forced to look at some behavior patterns or things within you uh, that 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 you need to to just heal from, you know, a, a deeper level of 
healing. It could be trauma, it could be fears, it could be all kinds of things. People have fears of abandonment. People find themselves uh, attracting the same kind of relationships that they got out of before that was harmful and abusive or whatever. And so what the heavens are saying, look at those things closely. Look at those things closely and don't repeat these cycles because remember the moon is at 29 degrees and it's saying, I want to end the cycle. The Holy Spirit is saying, I want you to end this cycle. I want you to end the patterns, to break the patterns. And notice again, it is in Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn here and Saturn brings restriction. So God is saying, remove from the restriction, remove from the limitations that you placed upon yourself or the limitations that you've allowed other people to place upon you and move into the place that I've called you to and stop repeating the same patterns over again. For some, it could be behavior pattern. For some of you, it is mental stuff that is just going on in your head that is blocking you and keeping you from moving on. But here is your key to the kingdom. Here is Chiron. It looks just like a key, see? And so he says, look, I give you the keys of the kingdom that whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in the heavens and whatever you loose on the earth shall be loose in the heavens. So you have the key to your life, to your, to your, to your, your spiritual life, your financial life, your emotional life, uh, every at your physical life, every aspect of it. And so this full moon is telling you to use that key. Now he's also showing since it is a square that it may be a little tension there. It could be a little stress because sometimes we don't want to really look at things the way they are. And we like to look through rose colored glasses and we like to do all of these other things but the heavens are saying really look at things and deal with them so that you can move on and stop repeating these same patterns okay and again the moon full in Capricorns and break out of the limitations break out of the structures that you have placed upon you uh, that were not good structures okay hear that the right way all right and break out of the things that that have been placed in your life or or, or that you have allowed to be uh, in that is keeping you from becoming the best version of of yourself okay do you understand what I'm saying I'm not is it is not saying go wow and forget about this forget about that no it's talking about the things that would hinder you from becoming the best version of yourself because Capricorn represents uh, a structure it represents uh, uh, all of those things uh, that brings about uh, the limitations and stuff now I'm kind of like going all over the place because when I look at this, it just kind of like does that for me. So I'm going to close this up and I'm going to just kind of talk. Otherwise, I'll be uh, going all over. But what I wanted to uh, deal with, and I do have to pull that back up quickly for one minute here to show you some things. I did mention it in the video teaching that I did about two weeks or so ago. Uh, it's called God Has Shown Me uh, What's Going to Happen uh, Over the Next 140 Days. You remember that video I did, that teaching? I did here okay it's on YouTube there by the way like and share uh, the videos and so one of the things uh, that I spoke in there uh, was that concerned me was Saturn uh, which is a very slow moving planet and its degrees in um, Pisces here and I told you at that time and been telling you before that we are moving into a season where some things are going to be happening okay I know I'm kind of mixing it up I'm talking about personal things and I'm talking about world events and all that but I believe that you are getting this is everybody getting this I want you to you that are getting it I want you to wave at me okay all right okay like my intention was okay I'm gonna just talk only about this first and then I'm gonna talk about that but I don't know how things go <laughs> I mean I I'm looking at this and I'm seeing other things at the same time and so but uh, what I just showed you there was uh, basically showing you that we're moving at a time that um, despite the election in this country or who gets into office or whatever uh, that is we're, you're coming to a time where things are going to be very challenging for a lot of people and I told you that Saturn, uh, which also represents harvest, it represents food, it represents crops, it represents a lot of things. I told you that uh, it being in Pisces, which is a water sign, this was before, matter of fact, I said this before the hurricane came, I says, uh, which represented that uh, it's going to be a lot of storms, a lot of things that's going to kind of like wash away a lot of the crops. And there's going to be uh, like food shortage in many areas that they're going to experience this. Uh, there's going to be very long um, 
you know, lines of people waiting at food banks and things like that. Now, this is not just like next year. This is something coming up this year. There are some major things that's going to happen despite the awakening, despite all of the wonderful stuff that is happening within you. You are being prepared for some things that I'm not saying everyone on this platform is going to experience this. But I'm telling you, uh, this is not just in this country, but it is globally that some things are about to happen. And Saturn is showing me that. And uh, the heavens are showing me that. And so we need to be prepared for what is coming. And because uh, uh, the powers that think they be, those that are operating behind the screen, behind the scene that pulls the strings for uh, whoever is out front uh, in office, uh, being disguised as the president or whatever, you know, uh, they are planning some evil things. Why? Because uh, because of this Capricorn experience. What do you mean this Capricorn experience? In 2008, Pluto went into Capricorn. And if you are following the ministry, it is yet on the uh, Internet at www.atam.org. Uh, when Pluto went into Capricorn, I began to prophesy about a change coming with the government. And a lot of things was going to happen. Things were going to be turned upside down. And then uh, you find that Obama became the president at that time. But one of the things that happened uh, shortly after he became president, we entered into a financial crisis. Anybody remember that? Okay. So now after this election here, there is going to be a financial crisis. Okay. Why? Because we are seeing that these events are happening at 29 degrees of Capricorn and that Pluto is uh, is right now is in Aquarius. But Pluto has some unfinished business to take care of in Capricorn. Can you hear what I'm saying? Let me look at some of y'all. I'm talking star language. As Pastor Dorsey says, she's the star. I'm talking star language. And so uh, Pluto has some unfinished business that he has to take care of in Capricorn. And that's going to further uh, just topple uh, systems. And heads are going to roll. Okay, heads of states and corporations and things like that. And so uh, Pluto is going to go back into Capricorn September 1. Yeah, it's going to go back September. So you can mark that date down. And uh, he's going to stay there until around November the 19th, and he's going to move out. So now you see that things may appear to be going kind of smooth eventually, you know, as we get toward uh, closer toward this country election season, and then all hell is going to break loose, as they say. And uh, because of some things is going to be taking place and the heavens are showing us and I'll be talking about this more and more because of what is happening with Pluto when it moves back there in uh, Capricorn and then the opposition that's going to take place there uh, with, with Mars and uh, which is, you know, a malefic planet, which represents warfare, violence and bloodshed. And you will see that in the streets. OK, and it's not going to be just in this country, but in other places around the world, it's going to seem like uh, things are going to become inflamed. But I need you to know and to realize that it is the heavens are declaring, showing what is going to happen. But there are people behind the scenes pushing certain buttons to make sure that it happens. Do you hear what I'm saying? OK, and so you need to be aware of that. And I'm giving you dates and time frames so that you can be praying so that you can be in a good space despite what is happening so that you can understand when all at once uh, an alert. I'm hearing this now come on the phone. You know how it is when there's like a weather thing that's going on, like, you know, a storm or something. I hear that right now in the spirit and stuff, you know, and uh, and then there, those types of alerts will be happening in this country, but it won't be a natural storm. You know, some may happen for that, too. But what I'm talking about won't be a natural storm. It will be some of the other things that's happening and uh, in the country here and uh, where it's going to just get uh, uh, that uranium energy for those on the negative side is going to just shake things up, turn things upside down and create chaos and mayhem. And you're going to see right after, uh, excuse me. Right after September the 1st, this could happen. Now, I'm not saying now, I'm only telling you this. It could be 
<laughs> that somewhere around there, that powers are handed over into another hand. And so things are going to kind of like, I'll be looking more into that and go into more details another time, but I'm just dropping some seeds here. So September 1 through November 19, okay, the heavens are shouting this and saying that this is crazy stuff, right? And so it's not going to stop after uh, Pluto goes back into Aquarius and announcing this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, which we know it is. But, you know, what a lot of conscious people don't realize, and even astrologers and other people that I've talked to, people in New Age or whatever, they're saying, yeah, but we're on, you know, oh, Pluto is going to move into uh, back into Aquarius, and then it's going to be, I'm going, no, no, or as Jeremiah would say, no, you know, <laughs> it's not going to, it's not, no, we're yet in that period of transisting, you know, and we're in that in-between time, I call it. You know, the scripture says you're being transformed from glory to glory. I used to call it the two zone. So we're yet in the two zone where a lot of the garbage and and crap from this previous age, the Piscean age, and all of that Capricorn uh, energy, like, you know, from the government, is it, the, the, the layover from that is yet got to be washed out so that we can fully move into this Aquarian energy. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay. And so that means that, uh, you know, things are going to be kind of shaky. Things are going to be happening. And on into next year, and it's going to, gonna go on you know for a while but you know what at the same time this outer system is seeming to come apart and to just uh fall apart and to turn on each other and do all of these crazy things the people that do know their god will be strong and will be doing exploits and so as i told the people uh, on the telegram the other day i said just get your popcorn out and just sit back and watch the show you can be an observer and you don't have to be a part of that you know because people are going to be all round up and work up because of that martian experience when this opposition comes maybe i'll show it to you quickly here i'm, I'm trying to get away from uh uh, the charts right now because I'll get drawn into other things here but let me just quickly show you this what I'm talking about I believe I cast it for that time and we'll see if I can get it pull it up if I can't it's okay and uh, yeah I did okay let me just go back here and uh, all right okay all right so now you're gonna see this See, that's the thing with uh, astrology. You can look in the past, you can look in the present, you can look in the future. So as you see the date here, this is November the 19th, this is at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and uh, Pluto is going to go direct in Aquarius, okay? So it's going to move out of uh, out of Capricorn, where it had been from September 1 all the way till around the 19th and then it's gonna go direct, okay, in Aquarius. And so uh, I wanna just show you this, this energy that is there. And so you have Pluto right here, you're gonna see it's gonna be at zero degrees starting over, and it's gonna be there for about 20 years or so, which is gonna be a great time. And you see this right here in opposition, okay, to this moon, as I was saying here, and then you see this uh, basically uh, in opposition to, sorry, to, to Mars right here, and Mars is in, uh, is in Leo, that's a fire sign, uh, a lot of aggression, a lot of things that's going to be happening, uh, it is showing us, not only in this country, but on the planet, and you see all of this sacred geometry here, which I'm not going to go into, I'm just letting you know ahead of time, so that you can be aware, all right, now I'll close that because I don't want to get further into that. So now we understand uh, where we are and we understand what we are to be doing as we break out of these old structures in our personal life. There is a breaking out of these old patterns and structure that is happening, you know, in the uh, in a greater sense, like in, 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 in the corporate sense that we are breaking out of these uh, things there. And uh, how many know that when you're breaking out of, uh, of something, you have to use force sometime. OK, <laughs> you have to use force sometime to to just get out of those things. All right. I'm almost finished here and I'm going to go on here to um, and keep in mind that while I'm speaking right now, you yet have a ghoul that is there 
that is conjunct with, with Uranus, and that work is yet being done. And um, I think that's going to be all that I want to deal with the, astro with the astrology part of that. Okay, everybody got that? Did it make sense to everybody? Everybody is, is uplifted. Everybody is excited. Okay. All right. So I told you uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, but it's all good because it's all God. Right. All right. And so that's for us to prepare and uh, to be thinking about the things that's coming up in this country uh, here. All right. Now, so uh, I want to just go uh, deal with one other little point here because um, people are not aware. And we were talking about this yesterday at the Prophetic Advantage uh, uh, with uh, Bishop uh, Andrea Williams and Prophet Shannon uh, there, and we talked about uh, Project 2025. Okay, wave your hands at me if you've heard of Project 2025. Wave your hands at me if you've heard of that. A lot of people have heard of it, but they don't know a lot about it, you know, and some people that I've talked to, I've had a couple of people tell me, no, I don't want it. When I started to tell them, they, they flat out tell me, I don't want to know about it. I don't want to, I'm going okay but aren't you a truth seeker <laughs> don't you want you and so i'm going to just talk a little bit about it that there is a plan for some very evil things in this country and uh you know and we here we are a family on this platform amen amen we are here from various nations from europe asia africa we have had people from some time uh, pop on from central uh, south america uh, my brother down in colombia and so, but, uh, and so we are family. We all be black, white, brown, whatever. We are family here. But there is a plan in this country, just as the evil Mordecai had, uh, not evil Mordecai, but Haman, the evil Haman had against Mordecai and against the people. And there is an evil plan that is targeting, unfortunately, black and brown people again. That's just the truth. And it's a difficult subject for some time to hear and to talk about. And, uh, and we don't like to make people that are not of that, uh, if you don't have enough melanin like me, <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> and so, but, but we have to talk about it because that's, that's just the truth of it, you know? And so we need to really be praying about that and watching just as Mordecai. Mordecai was aware of what was going on. Matter of fact, he got the word to Esther and says, hey, there is a decree. There is Project 2025 that is in play, and they're trying to rename it, you know, Agenda 47 to disguise it because people find out about it. You better do something. You better go before God or there won't be none of us, you know. <laughs> Didn't he do it? Didn't he do it? Didn't he do it? Somebody come. Somebody smile at me. Somebody look at me and smile. Okay, that's that's the story. That that's what happened there. And so that's what we're doing. We are alerting uh, the the Esthers. We are alerting the people that know how to pray, that know how to see God, making you aware of these things. Go look at it online. I'm not going to go through all of it, but you remember about two three months ago, I was teaching you about the Noahide laws at a Sabbath morning teaching. And I told you what their plans were in these seven points for the Noahide laws for bringing in basically martial law and all of this other stuff and really a clamp down and making just creating like an authoritarian type of government and to do away with democracy as we know it. And we know that it, whoever is in that Oval Office, they are controlled. Some of them want to be controlled and then like being controlled, and then others may resist uh, uh, the control that, that that is there. But, but the point I'm making is this: is that there 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 is, there is the evil Haman, that energy that is there that is planning on doing some things that will affect this nation, everyone in the nation in a in a horrible way. Matter of fact, it will bring to pass a lot of the things that the evangelicals have been prophesying about and talking about for years. And now we see that they are lining up to sign on the dotted line for it. I'm going, duh, what is wrong? Why can you not see what is happening? But you know, the scripture clearly lets us know that, uh, that when we don't seek to walk in truth, that God will allow us to be blind, okay? And we can't see the things. It's just like we were before we came to Christ, right? We were blind. You know, people told us about this wonderful life, but we couldn't see it because all we could see was the beer, the alcohol, the drugs, the women, the men, the money, the, you know, whatever the thing was, that's what we saw. And then finally, we had that moment where a moment of clarity and then 
wow, okay. And so the Project 2025 is basically to roll things back to the way that they were you know, around 1963 or before, right? <laughs> and so where a lot of people were kind of like didn't have rights to do things, and this is brought forth by the Heritage Foundation that was founded in 1973, 73, uh, because some of the people, you have to read the history and stuff and read between the lines and stuff. You have to learn how to do that. I've been telling you guys that for a long time, even when you're watching the news, you have to hear what they're not saying because there's a lot that is said between the words. I, I even listen when, when people are talking and I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. I'm going, really? You know, it's just you, you train the spirit of God, train you to, to kind of like to, to do that. Right. And so where you read and hear between the words and stuff. And so after the, you know, uh, Voters Act and all the uh, Civil Rights Act of 63 take, had take, taken place, there were a lot of people that was not too excited about that. And so, you know, the Heritage Foundation was finally got off the ground about 10 years later, okay, and it was about American heritage, and the American heritage looked a certain way, and where it was not all inclusive or whatever. And so the American, the, the Heritage Foundation, uh, that was a part of a previous administration, put forth some things that they want to implement. And you know what, unfortunately, they are going to be able to implement a lot of those things for time. I'm just telling you the truth, right? However, that doesn't mean that we as the people of the Most High God and that are watching uh, that we shouldn't pray, that we need to pray because we can soften the impact and we can do a whole lot of damage to, through prayer and fasting and reversing things and using your eye magic, your eye imagination to do a lot of things uh, in the spirit world because we are in a spiritual battle. How many believe that? We're in a spiritual battle that is taking place. And, uh, and so the things that are being brought forth, it's gonna, help, it's gonna be bad for a whole lot of people. Uh, the educational system, one thing that I'm kind of concerned about, thank God that I've been blessed to homeschool my kids. I got one that's gonna be graduating at the end of the year, graduating early, and they've never gone outside to the school there, and I was able to do it at home uh, by the grace of God, but, and I could, I could brainwash them in the way I wanted to brainwash them instead of allowing the system to brainwash them, right? <laughs> and so I see Josiah's going like that. I believe they, they homeschool also, Josiah and Kayla, all right? And so, uh, yeah, maybe Billy also, okay. And so, uh, and so that's, uh, that's uh, very important to be able to do that. And we understand that every family is not able to do that. But at the rate that these uh, evil people are going, the history that was already corrupt and messed up, it, that's gonna all be changed. And so, you know, it will be a whole new history within five years from now. They will have revised history because all of the partial truth of history will be taken out of the schools. And so the kids growing up, they're going to hear this reinvented history that's been, for lack of better word, whitewashed, you know, and it's going to be crazy. And so there will be people that, you know, have no history because it will have been taken. And that's what the colonizers always do. Right. And so. Uh, that's one of the things here where certain things will be taught. But then also uh, the, the because of the federal funding for education uh, that's going to happen. Remember, this is about relevance, prophetic relevance. And so you need to know this. It can't be every five minutes. High five, somebody. Uh, prophesy, prophesy. It can't, you know, you have to like get beyond, <laughs> you know, the, the 30 fold and, and, and the 60 fold. You have to get into something that that, you know, after you receive a word of prophecy, after you high fived about 20 people and ran up and down the aisles and done all of the other wonderful stuff that I love to do, right? And stuff, you have to be able to stand after you fall down about 20 times and stuff. You have to be able to stand, but in order to stand, you got to stand on something. And if you got no information, you got no knowledge, you have nothing to stand on, right? Because the implication of the knowledge is what gives you power. Not just the knowledge, but when you begin to apply that now application of it, uh, gives you power, right? And you have to have wisdom. That's why the scripture says, my people, Most High said, are destroyed for the what? 
lack of knowledge, knowledge. And does it stop there? No, it's, it's because they rejected it. Read the next verse. Not that it wasn't available, but they were more interested in the high five it and, you know, the thousand dollar prophecy, the 500 and the next person going to say this and all, all of that and all of that. All of that is wonderful, great. I, I love, you know, all of the other stuff that's of God. But, you know, give me something. <laughs> Something to chew on, something that's going to make me grow, something that's going to liberate me so that I can do it for myself. I need somebody to shout amen on that. I'm going to let your, I'm going to open up your mic, see, because I am not here and this platform is not here to do it for you. I give you so much. I will teach you. I will train you. I will do all of this. But at some point, you got to do it for yourself. I need somebody to shout amen to that. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. I see Stan's in the house. Great. Great. I see Pastor Allen's in the house. Old Pastor Noel in the Philippines is in the house. So that is the purpose for the fivefold ministries to equip you. Not to keep you coming, 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 needy, 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 you know, needing to hear, have somebody lay hands on you every few days or every week and prophesy over you. All of that is great. We, we love it. God speaks all the time. But, you know, uh, it, it is to get you to the point where you become the apostle, you become the prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher within you. And uh, we can function at a higher level because uh, we have the seven spirits of God operating within our life at that time. And we're more of a, uh, how can I say, we're more that that interpersonal relationship we can help each other the body fitly joint together okay supplying everything that is necessary okay for one another right and so and, and in order to do that we have to deal with some of the issues that that are relevant otherwise we will be like as the scripture says this woe unto those that are at ease in zion they were in zion but they were at ease because they were not aware they were more interested in all the theatrics or whatever. Woe to those that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountains of Samaria. And whether Yeshua, not the, well, the prophet says, you know, uh, when they say peace and safety, you know, he says sudden destruction is going to come. In other words, Uranus effect, sudden something's going to happen. And so that's what religion is telling people, you know, you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about that. You know, uh, we're going to get our man in and then Jesus is going to come. And I mean, it doesn't make sense, you know, right? It doesn't make sense at all. And so, but yeah, we need to be prepared. So this, this uh, Project 2025 thing, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's very disturbing. It's about Christian nationalism. It's about everybody in this country coming under this theocracy type of government and where the leaders of it won't even be Christ-like in any way. <laughs> but they will uh, institute the Noahide laws because of, of uh, certain people that they want in office and stuff that will go along with it. And that means that if you don't believe a certain way or if you happen to vote a certain way or if you happen to have a difference of opinion, you're going to think that you're in Russia or you're in Korea somewhere because they got those big giant Walmart stores that they have emptied over the last, what, seven, eight years they've been emptying them. I don't know if you guys have been watching and paying attention. They have been emptying them and closing them down for a reason because those will become uh, concentration camps. But internment camps. <laughs> That's that is the truth. That is the truth in this country here. And so they're 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 moving very quickly to get this in place while you're sleeping, while you are busy doing all of these other things and stuff. You know, they are plotting your demise and they're plotting, you know, uh, ways to to bind you up and to further make you a slave to their system that they are creating, all right? So I'm not gonna go into all of the different points here, but I want you to go online, look it up, and uh, you'll see how it's just so set up in, in such a way that you can have a nice, good Christian federal job, but if you're not of a certain political party, you might lose that job. You might have been working there for 25 years and they will kick you out. And people are going, yes, yes, yes. I'm going like, what is gone? What has happened to the people of God? Supposedly people of God. So you're getting to see the, 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 the church, the ecclesia, the true ecclesia. And then you're seeing the system. You're seeing the whore and you're seeing the bride. 
Well, I'm just using biblical language because the whore goes and sleep around with all of these kinds of stuff, you know, and, and tries to, you know, proclaim that she is the bride. How many know that there is a difference between a whore and a bride? There's a big difference, right? Well, the Bible calls it that. Revelation 17, 18, it says that she's going to be riding up on that political beast. And she's dressed in the scarlet colors and everything. And God told me many years ago that beast that she's riding upon that's giving her power and uh, that and making all these promises and faith based initiatives and stuff like that is going to turn around and devour her. So I've been sounding the trumpet for quite a long time. <laughs> saying, get off that beast, change your garments, get out of that hooker red, you know, uh, that, that she's wearing the Bible like, you know, nothing wrong with the color red, but it's symbolic of something because of the base chakra and all of that, right? Get out of that and just, so we have to understand, and but my last point on this is that system, they are changing the name to Project uh, 47 because of, uh, of they, the person that they feel will be the 47th president and stuff, you know, and which very well could be unless God supernaturally or something intervenes. But I'm telling you that that um, Medusa energy is yet around. <laughs> that takes off the head. That energy is yet there where things can suddenly happen. That Al Ghul, that's what it's called, is yet there. And it is just there. And I'm not going to go further into that. So you want to be praying. You want to be aware of what is going on in the world. You want to be spiritual, but you also want to have some, uh, as I used to say down south, education. You want to be aware of things. Now, I said something a few weeks ago, maybe maybe last week, and because uh, I, you know, I get very passionate and I get in that prophetic mode. And when I get into the, that prophetic mode, you know, the shy me somehow disappears and I might just come out very strongly and say whatever, you know, because I am in that mode and it's not me. It is the Christ that is speaking. However, in saying that, I do understand that it sometimes maybe offend people when we talk about things, because number one, I am not trying to be divisive in any way. I'm trying to bring unity. Last the other week, I think last week or maybe the week before I was telling people, you know, basically don't vote at all. But then I do realize some people really believe in that and want to do that. So go do whatever you want to do. <laughs> if you feel to do that, do that, right? And stuff. And uh, But just realize that there is an agenda behind the scene uh, regarding who gets into those spaces. And uh, uh, it's, it's very interesting how that happens. Let me see if I have any other thing here. I know this has not been the type of Monday night master class that we would normally have, but this is what spirit has given me. And uh, he wants you to just be aware of these things so that uh, you can know what to do and how to do. I'm telling you months ahead uh, about these things that's going to be taking place in this country so that you can be preparing yourself. OK, uh, you saw what they did with the with the power, right? How, you know, uh, the glitch in the, the window system quote unquote glitch and how the hospitals lost power, the airports and everything's like that lost power. You ever watch TV and then it comes up and says, this is a test. That's what it was. <laughs> you know, it is a test. They are testing just as that uh, COVID type thing was a test for what is coming next. And so you are being psychologically uh, prepare for some things if you can hear this and if you can understand this, okay? And so you are in a time where uh, a lot of things that will be happening, powers, there will be power outages, there will be from solar flares, and then there'll be other things happening from people flipping switches and stuff uh, just for the sake of doing things, for the sake of control on the planet and in this country specifically I'm speaking of now and, uh, and other things. And so we, we just want to be aware of those things and always want to be, uh, have extra water, have, you know, just like they do when there's hurricanes and when there's earthquakes. The sun is about to move into Leo tomorrow. 
And that's all I'm saying. Okay. And so when these things are happening, we want to just be prepared, right? Okay. So uh, that's basically it. Now I'm going to just move from here and I'm going to open this up for questions shortly. But uh, our, our uh, summer seminar starts tomorrow. All you that are registered, that's at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, okay? We will be starting. We realize that some of you cannot be there for the live session. Those of you that have gotten on late, I believe if you look in the chat right now, you can see information how to get started with that and stuff. And so if you want to be a part of that, it's going to be a four to maybe five week a seminar. Very powerful, very mystical and it's going to be a whole lot of fun, okay, if you want to do that, all right? And so um, I just bless you with this word, and may the truth of this word continue to just settle and rest within you, and may the Holy Spirit bring more wisdom and knowledge to it, and take uh, what the heavens are saying with this full moon, release yourself from any limitations, and realize that you are unlimited, and uh, they, the scripture says that they turned back and they limited the Holy One of Israel, so we don't want to limit the God within us and uh, move out of old patterns and allow the new to come forth within you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, are there any questions? Anybody got something you want to add to it or say any of you prophets out there or other people or whoever, if you got something that you want to add to or say regarding what we just talked about, we do have a few minutes here. Uh, I told you I wasn't going to hold you long tonight. You can use the icon to raise your hand, but you will have to move quickly and don't just sit there waiting around saying, I don't know, maybe I'll somebody else. And then after we move from this, uh, we will go into a time of maybe ministry in case there are some people here that have words for somebody, okay, to, to release the prophetic over their life. We'll do that also. But if anybody have something regarding the message that we just received, Okay, you can use, okay, I do see a hand. Okay, I, that's uh, Pastor Dorothy there. Go ahead. Okay, this is regarding the message, but it's about uh, giving, uh, giving into the ministry and saying that I give a donation because I'm not going into the depths that, you, that the prophet guru go into, but I do know that I need it and I can benefit from it. So it's like your de donation is like filling a prescription. Consider your donation as insurance because if it don't, if you if you don't pay full price, you don't pay full price for for what you are getting. But it's like going you uh, hiring a lawyer or a doctor. You go to a lawyer because you don't know all of the laws and you need that help. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here at this. I call it a clinic. Sometimes it's a class. But and it's why you go to the doctor, because you don't have all of the knowledge that you need to survive. And I feel like God is showing where he's sharing all of this. And he's doing it under the unction of God, because when it's all of this happens, you don't have a heart attack. You don't have heart failure for what you see coming because God has already shown you what's coming. It's, it's like it was in Egypt when they had all of the plagues. Mm -hmm. It's like if you were in Goshen, you were on the safe side. You mm -hmm. woke up and it's like wondering what all of the flies are about. Why are all of I had to go to work and I see all of this happening, but it didn't happen to me. That's how it will be. Uh, uh, when all of this comes down, a lot of this comes down and we know that it is because God is telling you is, but the prophet is here sharing all of this. And like I said, I give because I don't go into all of those deaths that he goes into, but I know that I need it. That's why I go to the doctor. I know I don't know everything they know. And I go to a lawyer and I don't know everything they know. So I just wanted to reiterate, if you're not giving, consider giving. And if you haven't been given and you're staying in the um, in the same place, it may be because you're not giving. Mm -hmm. And so it's not. And the prophet didn't know that I'm saying this, I, I, that I was going to say this. But I feel like the Lord is saying it's time that we supported this ministry in a bigger way because we need what he's sharing. God is speaking and we're going to see what's coming down after November and January, you'll be glad that you were here. 
because some of the things that are going to happen on the political front and you're going to see some, the demise of some people right before your eyes, mm -hmm. you would have heart failure if you had not uh, been here. So I wanted to say, consider giving if you haven't given and see how much God will bless you, no matter what it is. People gave, uh, uh, supported Obamacare when Obama don't care. <laughs> but, you know, we get, we do whatever little bit we feel like it's just going to be a little bit. But if it's just a little, I'm just saying everyone considers sowing into the ministry because what's going to come out of this ministry in the next couple of months is going to keep you afloat in the next, the months to come. And especially in 2025, you will be glad that you shared in this ministry in the last three to four years. And in the, you, if you came in the last few months, you came um, at the right time. And so I just wanted to, um, to share that. And thank thank you. you for listening. Thank you, Pastor Dorothy. Thank you. That is so true. Good. Uh, in the chat there, I believe uh, Zarias has put in the information there. If you're watching this on YouTube, just look down into the description box and you'll find ways to give and support this ministry. That's my announcement voice. I'm trying to be like Tony. Okay. Anybody else got something you want to say? Anybody else got something you want to say? Uh, Asher, you got anything? No? If you do, and if you do, raise your hands, anybody, then I will get you. Okay, I don't see, nobody else got anything to share right now. Okay, I see uh, Dr. Angela. Go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Try it again. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Prophet John. I'm um, just wondering, would you be able to send the recording link this evening, I'm anxious to go back and just get every little detail. No, it won't be this evening. You may okay. get it tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. All right. I don't see any more hands. Okay. Um. Is anybody getting a word for somebody out there? Anybody getting a word? Okay, prophetic word or insight or something. It is okay, we can flow in that. That's what we're doing. We're doing it in different ways. We're doing it through the stars. We're doing it through vision. We're doing it through uh, word of knowledge or whatever. So if anybody's getting something for someone, you can raise your hand now and then we will allow you to release that word, okay? We're not going to sit around here and wait. I see David's in the house tonight. Uh, okay. Uh, any of you that are here for the first time, if you would like to use the icon to raise your hand, okay, you can do that. Okay. I see Zarias, is your hand up? I can't believe it. His hand is up. Oh, my God. What's going on? I think happen? Billy had his hand, hand raised. Okay. Like on the camera. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see it there. All right. Okay. Hi. Thank you, Zarias. Okay. Go ahead, Billy. Prophet. Hey, how are you doing this evening? I am excellent as always. How about you? Oh, grand. Some grand day. Um, so I've just got a quick question. Um, I don't know if you've been paying attention to any of the news, but they've uh, been saying that they're going to get the Ten Commandments and prayer back in the schools with the Bible. Mm. Um, what is your intake on that? I so wish, where, I'm going to. What do you say that that would possibly do good for our country? I think that's the worst thing that could happen for the country. I know okay. it's totally different from what 99.9% .9 of the ministers out there in this country would say. And they would say, I'm speaking heresy or whatever. But as I told people like decades ago, a couple of decades, around that time, when there was this big push in how they say, well, we have violence in the school because of, you know, they took the Bible out. Anybody ever heard that? You know, they, they took the Bible out. They took prayer out. We have uh, all of this other stuff going on because they took prayer out of school and all of that. And I'm going, lies, lies, lies. You have that in the school because people are not parenting. 
<laughs> That's why you have that in the school. And uh, because parents are not parenting, they're not teaching their kids, and they're wanting to force the teachers to become their pastors. Right. I mean, they're already overworked. Jeez, and now you want them to become their pastors and have Bible studies with them and to oversee that, that is crazy. It doesn't make any kind of sense at all. That's the worst thing that can happen. That's a part of this Christian nationalist movement because they want a theocracy. And that is not gonna happen when we have, well, it's not gonna work when you have these corrupt people in office. These, you know, right. line machines and things like that, that will never happen. You cannot legislate righteousness. You can't make people live right. You can take, you can tape the Ten Commandments to their head to put every wall in the house. I mean, you look in, in the hotels, the motels, everyone got a Gideon Bible in it, right? But we know that many of those hotels and motels, what happens in there, you know, we know about the sexual assaults, the prostitution, the adultery, the fornication, the immorality, the perversion and all kinds of crazy stuff. And they have a Bible in there, you know, and uh, that's a very good question. And I, I think that's the worst thing that could happen. I think that Christians are being very ignorant and stupid for doing this. And they call it freedom of religion. And as I told people over 15 years ago, I says, OK, when you're doing this, if you're going to say that we you want freedom of religion you realize that there are other religions out there right so right, the right. satanist is going to be able to say okay i can i can bring my satanic bible and i can have my bible study and they're already doing that right. because right. you know and then you have uh, all of these other people you know i'm not saying that something is wrong with them but see you have this you know it's just the mentality of the evangelicals that that's trying to force uh this colonial type religion on people and it's just a repeat of colonialism it's, it is a repeat of that i know that it's different from what most people would say i think that's the worst thing that could happen i'm on record for saying i've been saying it for years uh, that they should be telling the parents to teach your kids at home have bible study with them if you don't know how to do it take them to church and let the church do it for them or or the synagogue or somewhere or this or the uh or wherever you go, the temple or whatever, do it. <laughs> but the teachers should not be doing that, and they should not. I, that's just. Okay, well, that's what I was thinking. But I was thought we were on the same page. I was, I was, I was afraid that's what it was. But yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that out. Thanks for bringing that out. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, I see. Uh, this is a good discussion here. We can discuss things like this. It's good, you know, and, you know, and it's OK to have a difference in opinion. You know, if somebody have a difference in opinion, that's OK. It's all right, you know, and stuff. OK, go ahead, uh, Pastor. Yeah, um, I was just going to say that I agree with you because they took the Bible out of the school, but they didn't take your kid out of school. So it has <laughs> to do with, like you said, it has to do with parenting. Because if you can have the Bible in your hand, you can take it everywhere you go, and it's not affected because it's not in your heart. Have exactly. you written a book? It can be a it can be a weapon. It's just another book until you get in it. Exactly. Until you take in and what is in it and apply it, uh, and start to apply, it, become a hearer and a doer. So that's what I said. It's like they didn't take your kid out of school. So what was in? What did you put in your kid? When you sent them to school, they took the Bible out hmm. and that made your kid uh, go, go rogue. My goodness. It I know that you haven't, you didn't, what are you doing with that Bible at, in, at home? Mm -hmm. And see, they would get me because like, if you're not going to read it to them and have them uh, um, do what it says, then just beat them with it. <laughs> use it for, uh, use it that way. <laughs> or a chest bell because you're not using it to do what it is you need to do. So that's what I was, uh, that's, I just wanted to throw that part in. And then I, I just you. wanted to say with about the voting, probably when you were saying that, mm -hmm. I wanted to say I vote, but then I said I vote, but I don't float. All right. I stay with God. It's like whatever, the, whatever happens, happens. It doesn't change the fact that I'm blessed and I'm part of the remnant. Exactly. And so that's where your focus needs to be. If you want to vote, vote. If you don't, you have your reasoning. And I can't say that it's, it's all God because I'm still in the body and I still have to deal with the flesh. 
Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, my focus is still on God, regardless of what happened or goes on around me in in that area. But do I pay attention? Yeah, because I feel like God wants me to pay attention to what's going on around me so that it's like if he's telling me, is he saying it's a snake and it's poisonous or he's and I'm thinking, OK, that looks like a fish. It's dark. And I pick it up. Mm-hmm. You know, I want it to be I want to be in tune with him. I want to know if it's just a fish or, or a snake. But if I am not paying attention, I don't know that. So do I need to pay attention to what's going on around me? I do, which is why I say it's good that we get together on at these on these Mondays class because no one of us can know everything we need to know. We only know in part, but exactly. together we can start to put make a put the picture together to put uh, have the whole. Amen. Know, well, I say a puzzle. Put the puzzle together. Something. Thank you, Pastor. The pastor <laughs> right. has spoken. <laughs> Amen. That is so true. I see Nikki's hand is up. Go ahead, Nikki. Okay, finally, people are starting to raise their hands and stuff. Jeez. Go ahead, unmute yourself. <laughs> okay. Hi. I just wanted to let you know that in the chat, there is a Ari okay. in here, and they said that they are new and they were having trouble raising their hand. That's all. Okay. All right. We'll get to Ari. All right. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know that. I, I can barely see the chat at this distance, so thank you for letting me know. Okay, we have Vaughn, hand is up next, and then we'll get to Ari. Well, Vaughn's hand was up, I thought. Yeah, okay. Uh, Ari, you can unmute yourself. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, one... Okay, you muted yourself again. Okay, here you go, unmute yourself again. Okay, on your screen, there should be something saying that, you know, the host is asking you if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh huh. Hi. Um, this is really interesting. Um, I didn't get to, my phone died for a little bit. So okay, speak a little bit louder or uh, go ahead. So it's. Oh. Hi, um, this is my first time here and um, I had a really good time and everything was very interesting. Um, uh yeah i guess that's mostly what i had to say okay all right that's good where are you from uh pennsylvania pennsylvania all right all right shout out to pennsylvania that's great all right excellent 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 okay thank you all right let's somebody else uh okay go ahead if you are here and you want to Say something, just raise your hand. I saw Vaughn's hand up, but then I saw it go down. So I don't know. Let me move from here and see it. Okay, it's back up again now. Uh, Vaughn, you can unmute yourself. There hey, you brother. go. Um, I, I think um, Ari was wondering if, we had, if anyone had a, any advice for her or prophetic words. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what I'm getting, but yeah, not, um, not okay. knowing that, what jargon to use. That's, that's it. That's it. Or how to use the technology. <laughs> You're using it pretty good. See, that's why you have to like uh, speak more. <laughs> so that, some of y'all don't know that, that Vaughn used to speak at, on the platform back in the day, back during the early COVID days. But uh, we're going to have to unmute him again. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you, Vaughn. Is that all? Is that all? Um, yeah, that's all. OK. Yeah. Excellent. OK. I believe uh, I see Pastor Han is up. And uh, I think she has a word or something for Ari. OK. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Me- uh- pull Ari out again yeah. okay okay when um Ari was speaking Let I'm just going to see what flashed before me 
Did you find her again? Let, let me try to find her again. It's easier when the you raise your hand and then I can see you easier. Let me just go through here. I should made should have made Zaria's uh, co-host for here because I am looking for you. Can you open your 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 video for a minute? That way, when you okay, there you are. I can see you here now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh huh. Okay, this is a question I have for um, Ari mm -hmm. because when she was speaking, I wanted to ask her: Are you afraid of flying? Not really. Okay, because that's what I saw when I mm -hmm. saw when I, you you came on is mm -hmm. that there is um, a fear of flying, and that it has it has something that happened in uh, in your childhood. I don't know if uh, it, and, and when I said that, I saw someone dropping you and so but anyway i am just wanting you to ponder on that because that is that was mm -hmm. the question i was supposed to ask you about a fear of flying and that uh god is uh releasing you from uh some things that traumatic really traumatic um things that um mm -hmm. happen in your childhood but uh, like I saw, it's, and this is not a spiritual drop. This is a natural drop. Mm -hmm. And I saw you saw someone dropping you when you were a child, and it's it's caused some kind of trauma. But that's mm -hmm. about all I'm picking up right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make any sense at all uh, to you, uh, Ari? Mm, not, I'm not, not, what's that? I, I said, I'm not really sure. Um, okay. only, I'm, I remember my brother getting dropped and we're very close. So maybe okay. That. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And, and uh, okay. but I'm, I'm saying that the, what you, what God wants to do is just uh, free you also from uh, some uh, generation of, uh, curses so i'm saying again like there's been like uh some premature deaths in your family I, i'm saying somebody that uh died in their teen years uh in your in the in a generation past and so i'm just speaking against premature deaths uh in your in your family and because it's something about your um, bloodline that uh, I see some spirits that they don't want your bloodline to uh, go on. And so as er they get your, uh, they intervene and cause a death as soon as possible. But I am just uh, uh, asking God to put a, a hedge around you and angels around you so that that doesn't happen with you or, or happen with your children. You have any children? No, I don't. Oh, okay, so as you, uh, uh, that it don't happen, you just, he's, the Lord just say, just say that it don't happen with you and it don't happen uh, with your children. So that's a curse that's being broken tonight. Man, I'll just add to what Pastor was saying, Ari, and uh, God loves you. And so, uh, and back to the, the, the fear of heights and stuff and flying and things like that. And I think maybe the spiritual side of it is, is like you've been introduced to a level of spirituality, but there's something about uh, spirituality that, fear, that creates fear for you, where you're afraid to really just go too far into it. Does that make any kind of sense at all? Can you, uh, I'm spe speaking to Ari. Can you talk into the yeah, mic? Yeah. Okay, does that make any kind of sense at all? It's just a yeah, yes? Yeah, that makes okay. sense. Okay, all right. Now, and so, so there is basically the, the struggle between the material world and, and the spiritual world. And there the, there's the pool that is there. Like, you know, there's a desire and the hunger for spirituality and looking for spirituality through various things that is there. But... Uh, what you're going to find is that you got to really just uh, completely surrender to what we call God's source 
and stuff and then follow that path. And when you follow that path through Yeshua, Jesus, that's going to unlock a lot of things for you. And so that's going to put you on the path, the uh, fast pack, okay, forward in your spirituality. And so, but it's like I see now the struggle is there, the material world and other things, and then there's the spirituality. And so you have to, uh, you've been brought to a point where you have to really just choose the path uh, that you're going to go on, which I believe is going to be spirituality and really completely surrender to the things of God. Does that make any sense to you? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, yes. right. Okay, so so this is where you're being brought to. And so, uh, plus it also, uh, Spirit is also showing that there's been like a lot of like pressure that you've been under and it feels like pressure from other people, uh, close to you, pressure to do things, pressure to uh, make some changes. And even there feels like, it seems like, you know, uh, some concern about moving or something has been uh, in the air or around. Does that make any sense? Yes. Okay. All right. And so, uh, and so I feel the pressure. Matter of fact, I feel the pressure even sometimes manifesting like in your head, like, like a headache, just, you know, like that. And this is coming from the stress and the pressure and stuff. I'm feeling it now. And, uh, and stuff that comes. And so, uh, but God has given you his grace, he says. And uh, he says to tell you that, that, you know, just go within and you will know exactly what to do and not to allow yourself to just be pressured by uh, the different voices I'm seeing speaking to you. Does it, is this making sense in any way? Yes. Okay, great. And so uh, he's saying not to allow yourself to be pressured into uh, anything that you're not sure about, because this is where you are. And so and there's this move that is coming up. And but uh, with this move that happens and stuff, if you make the right choices and stuff, you know, there's going to be a blessing in it. And there's going to be a lot of uh, wonderful things happen. But in the process of getting to that space, you know, you're going to have to really focus on, OK, I really want God. I really want spirituality, I'm not just talking about it or reading about it or hearing about it. But I'm going to really, really su surrender to the spirit and go after it. And that's where you're going to see the success. That's where you're going to find the peace. And that's where things are going to happen for you in life. Does that make any sense? Yes. OK. All right. Any any comment, any feedback uh, regarding that? Because I'm seeing I'm feeling this pressure. I'm feeling people and I'm feeling you uh, I feel like being forced to make some decisions about some things. Do you want to elaborate at all? Um, I I hear the like the I so my my lease is up in October. So like um, okay. maybe it's related that and mm -hmm. um i think you know a lot of pressure on either whether i'm even staying or if i am should move right. somewhere else or what mm -hmm. that kind of thing Be because so you're, you're thinking about I'm moving before october is that the thing um i'm just i'm, not, it's, I'm just questioning but but you're saying that you have to move by october okay yeah so it'd be like or or stay another year okay uh i'm gonna say I'm going to, well, you decide what to do, but I'm feeling that you might want to be looking in other places, just looking. And if something resonates to kind of go with that, because I did feel uh, a move coming up and I do feel, uh, you know, the move that's coming up, uh, I'll just say it this way. Are you with people now, living with people? Is this, is this like there are other people also in that space, uh, in the apartment or house or whatever? And I'm not trying to get personal or whatever. Yeah, yeah, no. There, I'm okay, really there's, there's like several people? Or is it like um, two, two or more? Yeah. Okay, right, that's what I'm feeling. Okay, all right. So uh, what's going to happen is there's going to be some changes that take place within you know, some of the dynamics of the household and who's staying there, where um, somebody's going to have to go somewhere else. OK, and so you want to be looking into, uh, you know, maybe what could happen if 
this person or this person is not here and should I be looking for something else? You want to just think that way. I'll just say it that way. But uh, that is some of the things. But uh, and so the spirit is basically saying, don't uh, allow yourself to be pressured, but really, really press into your spirituality and uh, make it a priority in your life. And things are going to just go well with you because God's grace is there uh, upon you. And um, OK, uh, and it feels like you have a you have a you're working, correct? And it's a pretty good job. Yeah. OK, yeah. OK, yeah. I, I feel like it's something that you like to do, you know. And uh, all right. All right. Well, we'll leave it as that at that. OK, I just wanted to say to her that um, and I'm just like picking up bits and pieces because God wants you to know and that he's a high power and he knows you. But it seems like that you are drawn to exotic animals. And I'm still relating, these things are relating to your childhood. But I am just getting those pieces because God is just saying that he wants you to know that he knows you. Mm -hmm. And there mm -hmm. has been like, uh, whatever, I just want to say like other spirits or whatever it is, God's in charge that that wants to draw you, but he keeps mm -hmm. intervening. Mm -hmm. But um, the, uh, I, like I said, I'm just dropping those bits, but I don't know what it has to do with the exotic animals and the draw and your childhood, but that's just the message I'm giving you because I'm getting these tidbits because he wants you to know that he does know who you are. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. All right. And one last thing here. Uh, if you're not in a job setting now where you travel from time to time or so, I, there will be something that's going to cause you to travel like that. The job that you do now, does it require any travel or um, are you? on occasion? Yeah. OK. But all not right. Really within state. What's that? Uh, not very far, but OK. I, in, I, in state. OK. All right, that's good. That's good because I I feel travel coming up. Maybe another trip is coming up soon, and so I saw you at a job that uh, where you would travel. All right. Well, thank you, Ari. Yeah, thank you. Hopefully, you got something out of tonight. I I, I did. Um, come I back did. next week. Sure. All right. Okay, I see another hand. Let me just remove this pin here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is, I can't see the name. You can unmute yourself. I think it's Valerie. Is it Valerie? Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can. How are you doing? Good. I'm nervous. My heart is racing, but I just wanted to say, hey, I've been actually watching the replays for several months. Oh, good. Um, but tonight, yeah, I just said, let me just join. So I'm here. I'm from Florida, originally from Connecticut. Um, wow. I don't know what else you guys want to say, but yeah, that's, that's all. That's that's all you need to say. <laughs> okay, well, that's great, and you don't have to be nervous. You're in a good spot. You're in a good place, and some wonderful things are headed your way down in Florida. Down in Florida, and the, and the Lord is saying to you, one of the things I'm hearing as uh, you begin to talk was, you know, just to put your hand in His hand and trust, trust. Trust the process, trust the process that he is working everything out and uh, that things are going to uh, be put together the way that they're supposed to be put together. And um, and uh, I'll just I'm not trying to be too personal or anything like that. Is there a concern regarding a relationship or something at this time? You know what? I have a good friend who actually told mm -hmm. me about you. Her name is Delitra, who said. God has been talking to her and me. I mean, God has been talking to her about me, and she said the word relationship. So I oh. don't know okay. what relationship this is. This is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really like looking at every relationship. Demetria like, is my spiritual is daughter, so <laughs> <laughs> she and I have been friends for um, almost ten years. She's mm -hmm. the first. Her and Lewis are the first couple I met in. Uh, okay. Florida. So okay. I don't know. Okay. Well, well, the Lord is basically saying to you just to trust and uh, put your hands in him and that there is something that will be 
uh, coming up. You know, at the appointed time, you don't have to go looking or anything like that, but, you know, something that's in the works for you that God has for you and just to trust in him and just to know, and it's going to be great. And you're coming into what I like to call a Jupiter period in your life where there's gonna be a lot of favor, a lot of doors opening, and this could be in the workplace, it's gonna be in other places also, but a lot of good things coming your way, a lot of uh, positive energy coming to, coming to you, as some people will call it, you're just lucky. And it's gonna be as though you just go around the corner and something is happening, you, know, the, 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 you pick up the phone, it's happening, it's just like, wow, wow. And I'm just seeing this expression in your face where God says, I'm gonna just wow you, I'm just gonna overwhelm you with my goodness, because he says he's seen your heart, and he He's uh, just uh, seen where you've come from and uh, and where you're going and that uh, you have stood and stood and uh, he's picked you up many times where the enemy tried to knock you down or whatever like that through different ways. Mm -hmm. But his power, his presence that is there and he is yet doing a deep, deep work, you know, healing. He's giving you the key like I was talking about tonight to deal with, you know, some of the things, you know, uh, of the past that yet come and even try to torment us. I'm seeing like even in dreams and stuff like that, uh, sometimes that you know what I'm talking about, right? And uh, dreams of things and the fears and stuff like that I can see. And but God says that that that, you know, perfect love drives out all fear. Perfect love drives out all fear. And what happened before will not happen again. <laughs> what happened yeah. before will not happen again. Hallelujah. And so uh, you can just release yourself to uh, move on in God and to grow in him and to just receive all that he has for you. He loves you and he has not forgotten about you. And he does hear you. Yes, he does hear you. And so he wants you to be confident in that, you know, and that uh, that he does hear and answers your prayers. And no, you don't have to be a certain level of spirituality or, or anything like that, you know, because that's where you, your, your thinking and everything has been. And so he wants you to come out of that and to realize that that, no, you know, you're you're fine. You're good, you know, and that he is with you. He's leading you and he's guiding you. OK. Amen. Blessings. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, I want to say to Valerie, can I say something to Valerie? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, uh, Valerie, I don't know if you're considering um, uh, changing, um, I want to say it's like business or occupation, but I'm just hearing the Lord say to put your name in the hat. You need to throw your uh, name in the game because he has something there for you. And I also am seeing like uh, some uh, properties. I don't know if you want to own it or you manage it. It's like um, the um, Airbnb or whatever, those verbos or whatever. But th the Lord is saying that the ship has not sailed on that. You know, I know that it's been a around uh, for a while, or, or but he's uh, causing you to connect with that and to connect with some people who are in that. But I... I, I kind of see you moving. I don't know the place that you're in now, but you, that would, you're going to get another place and the place you're in is going to become a part of your business. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what I see. So I don't know if you're leaning in that direction or not. Um, I actually just moved into this house in December. <laughs> okay. But one of my dreams, I actually, I don't know how much time I have, but really quick, I just started my private practice this Excellent. year. That was a whole testimony. And it's funny because my social media, I was, I felt the urge to change it to my name. So now mm -hmm. it says Valerie pull into that. Mm -hmm. Um and then I bought Airbnbs. I don't know, but I always have an inclination that I'm moving. I'm not settled. Even I've, though I just moved to this house, it's always like, this ain't it. This ain't mm -hmm. it. So I don't know. All yeah. right. But yeah, I see that um, that um, God is setting you up to bump into some people and you're going to be able to put in with that. And it's going to, I see your friend circle is kind of close and kind of been closed for a while, but it's about to open up because there are some people and some business connections that uh, you need to make and, and you must make for your business to, uh, to move forward. And it's another, it seems like it's another degree or something you're supposed to get concerning education 
that's going to put you in a different place and put you in a, uh, a at another level. It has something to do with education that's going to enhance you where you are, but you need to add this to your uh, resume or your credentials. Or it's I see some more letters being added to your name. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, uh, Valerie. Hallelujah. We pray that these things continue to minister to you. Okay. And if something's not clear now, it will become clear. All right. Okay. Anybody else before we move forward? Uh, look like I saw Leslie's hand there. Okay. Go ahead, Leslie. Unmute yourself. Is, is Ari still there? I believe she is. You still mm -hmm. there, dear? Yes, she is still here. Okay. Let me see well, if I, I can find her. Here. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I, I really, hi. I just oh, really. Oh, now we can finally see her. Okay. <laughs> pretty girl. Um, I just wanted to say, Ari, that um, I really feel that uh, that Yeshua is, is, is telling me to tell you that he's, He's giving you his peace. He's saying, I'm giving you my peace, not as the world system gives it to you, but I'm giving it to you as I give to you and, and not to let anything trouble you. Don't let your heart be troubled and don't, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Just if you believe in, in God, uh, then you believe in him. And I just feel that the peace God's peace that passes all all of our understanding is really going to keep your heart and your mind mm -hmm. through Yeshua through Christ, and that's that's the word I have for you tonight. Thank you, Leslie. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ari. Thank okay. you. I have a word for what is it? The Harrigan family. I see all that right. Here. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna was it down there? go ahead. Let me yeah find uh, it here. Uh huh. Okay, keep that. Okay, let me just just go go ahead and start talking. Yeah. Okay. So I was just uh -huh. wanting to say to him that the the Lord is saying that He's giving you another chance. I'm thinking. I'm just hearing saying. When am I going to get another chance and that you're going to do it uh, differently this time around? Mm -hmm. You have some uh, some plans and uh, are writing some things down. But mm -hmm. I think that th this time around it's going to include, I guess that's your wife. I think it's going to include her uh, more than it did um, the uh, last time around. But the, the Lord is saying that uh, he's you're getting a chance now. Mm -hmm. The doors are going to open and you're going to yes. get um, get that chance. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be able to walk away from some things that you want to uh, walk away from that you need to separate from. But right now, out of necessity, you are still tied to those things. But he, mm -hmm. the Lord is saying that he has heard you. And you're going to be able to separate from those things very soon. I see like some big things happening that's going to cause that to start to take place in 2025 yes. when you come into January uh, and February. So he's yeah. saying stay with stay with your plans because he's in it and he says he's going to give you feedback and he's going to give you downloads in the next three months that's going to set you free. Yes. It's going to set your family free uh, physically, financially, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I just say amen to that also. I was receiving a word too. And, and the Lord is saying that out of what appears to have been basically uh, torn down and rebuilt, torn down and rebuilt of the past and stuff. And so he says he's taking that of the old and he is mingling with that of the new that he's bringing forth to create something totally new. And this is regarding your life, this is regarding uh, work-wise, but especially regarding ministry, especially regarding ministry that he's gonna bring forth. 
And uh, he says that he's putting a crown on you. I call it the crown of the Magi, the crown on you, and the crown that has like the seven flames, which represents like the seven spirits of God that is there. And so he says, know that his anointing is upon you, is never left you, and that which you've been called to do, that you will do it, you will fulfill. And it's like he said, that don't say, but I failed this time and I failed that time, or things didn't happen this time. And the Lord says, forget, you know, uh, those things that which are behind and reach forth and press toward those things that are before you because he says, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to do a new thing. And I see a lot of wonderful changes happening for you and in you and for your family. And you come into that place of feeling fulfilled and knowing that, wow, you know, I am on the right path. God is using me and God will uh, work through me. And I see him bringing other people around you, young people around you. I see you uh, leading them and uh, instructing them in the ways of God. And I see other things happening uh, that looks like uh, that will go into the area maybe of recreation and other things are, I'm gonna just step out and say this. It, I don't know, I, I don't know if, you've, if you're in martial arts or anything like that or, or something that has to do with, with movement, but I see like uh, things involving of that way with, um, with, with younger people and you moving forth with that and where the, the word that will be given to them is not just only in word, but it's gonna be in action and being involved with uh, things like that, okay? I'm, I'm kind of reaching for words here and I'm almost, well, I, maybe I'll just come back and say it. I almost wanna say like involved with like, a, you know how they have like the YMCA and different things like that, different things like that. And I don't know if that makes any sense. That yeah, it does. God gave me an idea years ago to build a, it's a family recreation center. Okay. Where it's like a skating ring, but it has like games for families and kids. Uh -huh. and even a counseling center in there where families can come and get counseling while the kids are skating or mm -hmm. having their little fun. And he gave me gave it to me years ago, and I've been sitting waiting. Luckily, God, I'm, I want to wait on you to get the finances to um, a provision to build this thing, and I've been waiting years now for it. Cool. Even with the ministry, I've been doing small groups, and every time it seems like a small group builds up and it gets bigger and bigger, it collapsed. Mm -hmm. And for years, it kept doing that. And we just started. Um, we started a small group about two years ago, and um, We've been watching it grow and grow and grow. And I have been sitting like, God, is it going to work this time or is it going to collapse again? You know? So when she said what she said, it spoke to me a lot because I've been asking God, okay, God, is it going to work this time? Is it finally going to happen? Like I've been feeling it in my spirit for years. Is it finally going to happen? You know? Hey, Amen. Uh, I, hear, I see as a sign to you, the Lord is saying that I don't, think that you need a car or you want a car or, or a vehicle. It's not really a car. It's more like a passenger type vehicle. But mm -hmm. the Lord said as a sign to you that one is coming to you and it's going to be new. It's going to be a new one. It's not going to mm -hmm. be a used one. And that's going to be as a sign to you. I see you getting a big uh, donor. And so we're calling that person in that whatever has mm -hmm. been blocking that person and blocking mm -hmm. the relationship. Amen that is yeah. no longer will be there and it can happen that that is going to open up because it's this is a blessing as a sign to you that you that vehicle is coming to you and it's going to be new that's going to be a sign that god is going to mm -hmm. do something different be and it has to do with your change of heart and your change of uh and the, the mindset that you have you no longer think that and I don't know if you felt this intentionally that you got to do it yourself or that you are like the, the Lone Ranger, but the Lord is saying that he, you're going to consider your partner more and you're going to consider the partners that he is, send, is sending you because you have been a giver, but you've not been able, been much of a receiver. And Amen. so, That's oh, true. I feel God on that one. So, That's this so is your this is your season uh, to receive because now you are open to it. Amen. 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 All right. And regarding this uh, rec center type thing, do you have a business plan yet written out for it? 
I've been trying to build one. I started working on one. Um, it was last summer. And okay. I know even this summer we went, me and my wife and, and one of our friends who's in, mm. who's is connected to me in ministry. We went out and looked at some buildings okay. of where we could put it and where we could, okay. where it could actually, we would fit right. what the, fit the vision that God has given me. So we've been looking, looking. Okay. Now, right now, I just want you to focus, Spirit wants you to focus on just writing out that business plan okay. of how you envision it, what you want it to look like and all that. Get that down on paper. And uh, once that is out from the etheric and down on paper, uh, God is going to begin to move on it and everything is going to begin to come together. And you won't have to necessarily go look for people, but the Spirit will draw them. And there will be people that will have like vision and uh, want to do the same thing, and that's going to come, that's going to be drawn and uh, to cause this to manifest. Amen. So we thank Amen. God for it in Jesus' name, and it's so, and it can't be otherwise. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. So bless you guys. If, anybody else, before we move quickly out of here, we don't want to hold you too long here uh, before we go. Okay. All uh, right. I don't see any other hands up. And so we just appreciate all of you for being in this space tonight and coming out to hear the word of the Lord and to be a partaker of it and to experience what we've experienced here tonight. And we bless you, all of you that received the word. We always tell people like, you know, you can take what you want from what you heard or what you felt you heard and you can uh, leave the rest, uh, set it on the shelf and just uh, meditate on it, pray about it, okay? and allow the spirit to just do it. And so we thank you for it in Jesus name. Thank you, Leslie, for participating and stepping out. And so, all right, tomorrow, tomorrow is the first day of our seminar for those of you that are involved. And if you wanna know how to get involved, there it, it is in the chat there, uh, how to do that is on the YouTube channel, The 72 Names of God. Uh, it's gonna be a very powerful uh, experience, hallelujah. And even if you can't be there live, you need to get involved so that you can get the uh, the replay, which is going to be very powerful. All right. We want to thank you guys for being here tonight for this experience and bless you. And uh, I'm going to give you a little song to go out on in case you want to stay around for the song and um, just experience this in Jesus name as uh, Kirk Franklin says, all things. Mm. Okay.